Thank you for attending this awesome recital. About six months ago, I said, it's been a while since I've played a recital. It would have been last summer. And I said, I have to find someone I want to do a recital with, who I've never done a recital with before. And Wesley came to mind. So I am very excited to do this concert with Wes. Just a couple announcements for you. Um, if you need the restrooms, they are down that door there. Take a left. There's two right over there. If you need to leave for any reason, please do not go through these doors here, because I can see if you're leaving and it distracts me. <laughs> please go through the back doors there um, if you need to leave for any reason. There's a notebook over here to the door. If you could um, please put your name and email address, we're going to start a um, email link and list of uh, programs for music that we're doing here at the church. So you'll get a, an email from that. So please sign the book if you would. Um, in the program, you will see that my pieces are listed all together and Wes's are listed all together. But we are going to do something a little bit different, and we're going to split up our pieces. So I'm playing the first one, he's playing the second one, and that type of thing. So it's not exactly how you see it in the program there. Just some thank you announcements, public thank you announcements to the music committee for hosting the dinner that we had tonight. All the kitchen staff and servers, thank you to Lee for putting together the, bullet the program and the bulletins on Sunday. Very much appreciated. Um, and uh, Bill Saluzniak for tuning the instrument. We finally got it tuned, and hopefully it's... Uh, Good? Reeds are good, Wes? Okay, good. And those reeds are always a pain to tune. And then please silence your cell phones if you haven't yet um, so that uh, they don't go buzzing while we're uh, doing our recital. Anything else? All right, let's do it.
Well, good evening, everyone. I'd like to start by saying that I am not contagious. I have recently had COVID again. And uh, I'm told I'm good to go, but that the CDC recommends keeping the mask on when you're near people for good practice. So hopefully the only thing we bring tonight is good music. Um, the next piece is a piece that I actually started to play because of COVID. Because during 2020, when times were so unsure and when we didn't know what was going to happen, I thought back to uh, a very de depressing and dark time, which is the Thirty Years' War. I was living in Germany during the year, and everything shut down, and you couldn't get in anywhere, and the, everything was closed, and so I spent a lot of time um, looking over music up on the beach, um, drinking beer and eating fish in the sunshine. So it wasn't really that bad. But this piece um, is a piece that was written specifically to lift people's spirits during a time that was very challenging. During the Thirty Years' War, there was untold decimation of the population. There was death. There was despair. There was famine. And as you would expect, a lot of the music from that time is religious. It is sacred songs telling you that things may be tough here, but in heaven you'll find hope someday. Um, it was also a time when composers had to be very creative, when they didn't have a lot of music on hand, when they didn't have huge music budgets to write for big orchestras, and in a way, it actually pushed the art of composition forward. But this piece is written just to make people happy. It's a pop song that everyone would have known hundreds and hundreds of years ago, Also geht's, also steht's, that translates to basically, well, it is what it is. And I wanted to play it here for you now because, you know, I just had COVID, but also because it does such a great job of showing all of these different colors on an instrument like this. An organ like this one from the 19th century, it is all about color. Each sound is its own sonic world. And so this piece is in variations. Each variation will change and shift. The sounds will be different. You'll hear them coming out of different parts of the instrument. And in this room that has such an acoustic, you get to hear it echo, which actually is very rare in churches like this and very, very rare in the United States in general. So it is what it is.
as Wes was talking about the different uh, variations on that piece, it made me think there are four families of organ stops. You have the principles, the flutes, the reeds, and the strings. And this next piece is ironically called Dance for the Flutes. So it uses the flutes on the organ, mostly the eight foots with a four foot flute. So it shows off the colorization of the flutes on this instrument. So as we built this program, it came together very quickly, which was fortunate because this very room was about 40 degrees warmer than it is now. But we came upon the idea pretty quickly that we wanted to do two things. Well, really three things. Obviously, we wanted to feature the colors of the organ. But the two things we really wanted to do were, number one, have the organ meet us in the middle. This organ is from the late 1800s. So it really, in a sense, is time travel. When you hear this sound in this room, you're hearing the exact same sounds that people heard for generations right here, and that people will continue to hear. And so a lot of the music that I'm playing comes from long before this instrument was built, and a lot of the music that Kyle is playing comes from right around the time and even to today. And uh, we haven't mentioned it yet, but tonight there's actually going to be a world premiere. But that leads me to the second thing we were going to do, which is... Um, in addition to having this central voice for all the music that we're playing, this anchor point, we wanted to feature the idea of influence, of teachers and people who inspire. So there's a sort of a track that'll be here where, um, you know, the final piece today is a person who really influenced Bach, who of course in turn influenced so many people. I'm gonna be playing a um, sort of really joyous standard Bach prelude and fugue that is a great representation of his style and the influence that the Italian style had on him, Kyle's going to be playing a piece from one of his students who kind of took what he learned from Bach and modulated it into the style of his day, which was very different. 
And then we even have a piece, which Kyle will talk about later, from someone who's influenced us and um, who continues to influence people today in our field, a piece that was very recently composed. And so right now I want you to hear Bach at his sort of um, very comfortable point as a composer where he knows his style, where this piece is full of joy. You can imagine that it's almost like a string ensemble playing, that the right hand is like the solo violin, like Vivaldi really, it sounds like that, and the pedal is playing the cello solos, and the left hand is filling in with all the violas and the lower strings, filling it in. It's really a lovely chamber piece followed by a brilliant medium long form fugue in all of its complexities. And so if you get lost in the fugue, I don't blame you. And if I do, I'm sorry.
I think the student uh, was taught a lot, huh? <laughs> Good old Krebs and Bach. Great, great Baroque music. All right, who has a blue ticket here? Where you bought uh, stuff for the raffle. Mary, where are we? Oh, oh, Suzanne, okay, oh, oh, oh. Who's pulling? I pull. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to try. And, I can only get one, though. All right. Let's see here. Let's go with this one. Lyle Miller. Lyle. You can get it on your way out. You can pick it up on your way out. There you go. Congratulations. That's awesome. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> uh, who's next? Me. So now, for the very first time ever, we are all going to hear a lovely work by an even lovelier human, Rochelle Loren, the late Rochelle Loren, uh, just passed this year, um, tragically and without much warning. And she was one of the organ world's greatest composers today. Um, she was a really inspired composer. She saw life like cartoons. And her music, a lot of it is really, really, really hard or very, very intimate and gentle. And there's not a lot in between. And she found the music in its absolute simplicity to be just as powerful as the music that was brutally difficult and swept you away. She found the music that made you laugh just as powerful as the deep music. Just um, an amazing woman, and I wish that she'd had another couple of decades to write, which she should have had. But in 2019, I think, Kyle uh, was inspired to do something very interesting, and I'd like him to tell you about it. So one of the fun things I like to do is ask composers to write pieces for me, living composers. So uh, Charlie's written a few with Callahan and David Lasky in Lemonster and Carson Kuman from Boston. And uh, I was so uh, happy to have Rochelle um, want to write a piece for me. So uh, this is her piece. She writes in a very beautiful French, uh, modern French style. And it's a prelude and just very simple. It uses the reeds, the clarinet, and the oboe with some strings in there. So it's just a lovely piece. No one's ever heard it before. Um, and it's a uh, road premiere. So yeah, she passed away tragically just about a month ago. Um, she had terminal cancer, didn't tell anyone. And um, passed away just a couple of days after her birthday. So unfortunately, but... Here we go. Let's uh, remember her.
That was a beautiful tribute, beautifully played, and it was such an honor to hear that piece here for the first time with you all. You would have loved it. So, we come to the end of the program, where we go back to someone who influenced Bach quite a bit. And this is a style of music typically called the Stilus Fantasticus, the fantastic style. And it came from the buildings of northern Germany and the spirit of Italy. Way back uh, centuries ago, northern Germany up on the Baltic Sea was the, the kind of Dubai of its day with all of the wealthy trading ports and so untold riches. Um, Lübeck, uh, the city that Bach traveled to to study, um, has seven towers in the old city that are the size of skyscrapers. The St. Mary's Church there has 40-story high steeples. It's unbelievable. You go inside and you could stack any church several times on itself you've ever seen inside the sanctuary. And the sound would echo and echo and echo. But all of the Italian music that made its way from all of the Italian trading ports went up that way, and, and it was so inspiring to the composers in the north. And when you paired those rooms with and those instruments with this exciting music, you got a really unique, very interesting thing. And uh, Bach was influenced by this sort of pedal, wild pedal technique where people played like they were possessed. And um, when he traveled up to the north and he saw the kind of rooms they had, he had only seen very small wooden churches when he was young, and then he got up to Lübeck and he saw this big acoustic. But even places more central where Böhm was organist, um, the style was something new for Bach, and he wrote it down, and he transcribed it, and he uh, was inspired. And um, in his day, Bach was not actually all that famous as a composer. In his immediate area, he was, but he was really more known as an organologist, an expert in instruments, and uh, it's written by contemporaries that if people, if organ builders saw that Johann Sebastian Bach was coming to visit and try the instrument, they would shudder because he was sure to test and see how good the lungs were on the instrument. So he'd pull out all the stops, that's where the phrase comes from, and he would play all these huge chords and see if the organ could support it and could breathe. And so we've done our tests here and this organ has good lungs. But I want you to just enjoy the, the sheer, just sort of throw your head back in C major, the happiest key, and just enjoy these big warm chords and um, a really magnificent piece. I have so enjoyed being here with you tonight, and I've so enjoyed hearing Kyle hearing the instrument, because I never get to hear it out in the room. And it's a beautiful instrument that you have here. It's really a treasure. It's a pleasure to see a place that understands the thing that they have and that uh, takes care of it and that shares it with the wider community. That is less common than you would think and hope. And so thank you for that. Thank you to this instrument. Thank you to Kyle. Thank you to this church. Thank you to all of you.